do need to bring along a little bit from an offensive line point. Well, I think there, there were times when it looked like run, run defenses gave them a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're going to evaluate the film. You're going to watch the tape, and you're going to see things that, if it is going to be who we are and what we're about, how do you make it better, how do you enhance it? And there be, may be some things that you bring in say, you know what, we're not going to be that as much because of, you know, the personnel, what we have in the field. Um, you know, you learn from that, but you move on. So I, that's probably a better question for me after spring ball, once I've had my hands on these guys a lot, and once we've been around these guys through individual and through team settings and those things, uh, that would be a good one to come back after spring and really see what we really are honed in on that we got to make better so when we get to the fall, we're ready to go. Justin, when you were hired, it seemed like you were immediately, you know, you went on the road representing mm -hmm. Ohio State. Like that. Was that different for you? Like, was recruiting different knowing what was on your chest as opposed to, I don't know, like your previous job? Yeah, I mean, it like, doesn't hurt. I mean, you know, the, the, the block O when you walk into the, the front door of a school. Um, yeah, people see that. You know, there's a little bit of, you know, logo greed or whatever you want to say. Um, but. I mean, once again, like I, you guys will see us around me more. Like I'm a big fundamental basics, keeping everything simple and working the way up, right? Like football in itself is blocking and tackling. That's just how it starts. You block them, they don't tackle you, score points. Whether you throw it, you run it, however you get it, right? If you don't block them, then they're going to tackle your guy, whether it's a sack, a TFL. Now put that into recruiting. It's all about relationships. You got to identify the kids that you know can play for you and, and uphold the standards you have here. And then how do you go get those guys, right? It's not, for me, it's not with cool Instagram edits or dancing or music or whatever that stuff is. Like, you got to go in and, and hit the ground running with the high school coach, with the parents, with the mentors, with whoever's helping that kid in that decision. Um, and so, yeah, does this, you know, this logo help? Absolutely. You're going after a higher caliber kid. But at the end of the day, he's still a kid. You got to go build the right way and try to, you know, get him to, to want to choose here. And obviously, you knew Ryan Day coming into this. Did that help at all? Or was it kind of a trial by fire knowing that? I mean, you had been on the job for a couple of weeks and you're trying to get kids to come to play for you. It, like, not knowing kind of the logistics of the program entirely. I mean, did that, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, they made the conversations with the kids easier. You know, yeah. knowing, you know, what is you sell the vision of the program and you sell from the top down, then I could speak to that more because I've known Ryan for so long. So that probably helped. But you know, still, at the end of the day, like I said, you got to go in and dig on these kids and show them who you are, what you're about, how you're going to develop them, how you're going to take care of them off, off the field. You talk to the parents, you talk to the coaches, and you just build it that way because it's it's a relationship business. So, you know, if as college football has become more and more of a business, then our business is still people. And so you got to be able to, to work those kids and do that. That's what I wanted to ask about, really, because if you look at, like, Tim, he coached with Urban Meyer, and Ryan obviously knew him, and Luke Pickle with Perry, Ryan and Chip and you all together. I mean, how, how were those conversations when Ryan – tries to call you, knowing that Chip was kind of Ryan. Well, I mean, I, he did it the right way. Maybe more detailed than that. It doesn't need to be. I mean, that's something that Ryan can go. But there was, he's first class. He does it the right way. That's why he's a football coach at Ohio State, right? So um, everything was going about the right way through the discussions and those things. And then ultimately it was a decision that I had to make with what was best for me and my family and, and those things. And, Mid Midwest guy just missed uh, the zero degrees. And yeah, you know what? I had to get the, the dust off the uh, cobwebs from the winter coats in the closet because we didn't need those much in, in uh, Westwood, in Los Angeles. But I wouldn't say I missed it, but I'm getting acclimated pretty I mean, quick. How do you adjust to that mental shift? I mean, I, you know, from your athletes and coaches, you guys all have the same kind of mentality, just attack, attack, attack. But you're talking about going from L.A. back here in the middle of winter uh, on basically a, a win. How hard is that for you, for your family, just for everything that you have to do to, to get back here logistically? Uh, I mean, it's a challenge. i got four kids and moving across the country, so uh, the timing of that, finding a home. But those are all things that go into it. Um, and you get into this business knowing that. You know, I mean, I, I was told that, learned that a long time ago from some older coaches where I started having kids and getting into business. Of, it is hard. You're going to miss some of these things. You're going to be separated and do that. But, you know, once again, growing up as a Big Ten kid, like the Rose Bowl was the mecca. My father and I wake up and you'd watch the Rose Parade and you'd get ready to watch the, the sun going down over the San Gabriel Mountains in the third quarter. Like that was our world. That was the Big Ten world. Well, my office for the last four years was the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. So my kids got to go out pregame and postgame and throw the ball around and dance around. Like they thought that was normal, right? Now here, coming here, their pregame are going to be down on the field at the Horseshoe, right? At Ohio Stadium where their classmates would kill to do that. Or they once a year, they get to go to a game. And like, that's normal for them. So there's give and take to everything. 
Um, so yeah, in the heat of it now, yeah, I miss my kids. I wish I was around them. But we've presented that as a family and my wife and I to the kids, like this is our adventure. Like this is what we do and here's why it's gonna be this way. But we get it, you know, Santa Claus comes to the bowl games a lot. My kids don't know that Santa Claus comes to the house. They're what hotels he visit and make sure he can get there because it's just what we do. How much more of a house are you gonna get for the money here? Say again? How much yeah. more of a house? Way are bigger than I could get in Southern California. <laughs> hey Justin, uh, a lot of people's philosophy with the offensive line has generally been to get the five best guys and then slot to figure out, you know, how, to, how they're going to have that alignment. Last year, they basically had four tackles in the center. Um, what is your philosophy? What's the philosophy going to be going forward? Is it let's just find the best unit or the best players and then mold them into yeah, I mean, as you recruit and you look at your board, you want to recruit so many tackles and so many interior guys. Um, you have to have swing guys because of injuries and all those other things that go. Um, but I've always been in the philosophy, like you have to play your five best, right? So if you're, if the starting left guard, whoever it is, goes down and the backup left guard is your ninth best guy, you're not going to put him and have your sixth best guy still sitting on the sideline. So does that mean your right guard goes to left guard because the backup right guard is six? You know, there's some gymnastics there. Um, like I said, you have to have guys that can play, you know, multi-flex positions because of injury, because you can only travel 10, 11, or 12. You're not gonna have, you know, those full guys. So, I mean, yeah, you, to manage the roster, you wanna have so many tackles and so many guards, and you'd like those guys to play that way. But every once in a while, there could be some, the shell game going on of moving an outside guy inside or an inside guy outside so that your five best are playing to give you a chance to win a game. And what are your impressions of, of, what, your impressions of what you see so style? Uh, yeah, I've said this all the time is when you're when the offensive line position is felt Meaning you just there's a presence there you feel it. It's something that's tangible and That's when you're cooking right when my daughter's up in the 10th row of the stadium and it's third and two and she's like daddy's gonna run it to the right and Everybody in the stadium knows that and you still go do it. That's when you have people feel you so um, How do we get there? I mean, it's just once again, it's, I mean, it's like beating a dead horse. It's development. It's putting tools in the toolbox for these guys. So in a certain situation or a certain block, they pull it out and they go do it, right? And that comes with repetition. That comes with film study. That comes with doing your stuff on the field so that when that opportunity shows up where they have to pull that out, then they just go do that. And that's what I mean by being felt. Like we know what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and it exudes itself through the film, at the stadium, at the practice with people there in person watching. Justin, uh, OSU has been a pretty heavy stretch run team in the last few years. It's like you guys at UCLA have a pretty diverse run game on the chip there. Is there any talk with Ryan coming in here about helping diversify things a little bit on that end? Uh, we're going through cut-ups and watching stuff now. Uh, like I said, that's, that's really more personnel driven. So what your guys do well and how you can put them in the most opportune position to do that. I mean, I yeah, my book of work, I've been able to do 22 personnel to 23. I mean, when Ryan and I were getting at Boston College, we lined up with Andre Williams and we had three tight ends, a fullback and a tailback on the field and at the 50 yard line. So people would line up in goal line defense, but that's who we had and what we did. And so we got really good at that. Um, so, you know, that's a long winded way to say, you know, not really a specific thing. It's just gonna be a matter of seeing what we have, what they do well, and then how do we maximize that, and window dress that, and whatever the case may be, getting into that. What's the difference between trying to maximize your personnel, but also stick to an identity? I mean, you and Ryan obviously want to establish an identity, but you don't want to do things that your personnel won't allow. Uh, he's talking about stretch versus gaps. You've a lot of different things at, at UCLA. How do you kind of balance that as an offensive mind to, to not just work with your personnel, but also make sure that being true to yourself and your identity and not just feel what you need. Yeah, I mean, your identity becomes, though, what those kids can do really well. So the same deal. I mean, you get through spring ball and find out how these kids run, how they pull, how they, whatever they do, how they change direction and some of the things that you do. Then you start to hang your hat on, we can do this, and here's how we can, like I said, window dress it a couple different ways. So, you know, you're really running the same stuff on two, but is it formationally different? Is it unbalanced? Is it with the different personnel in the game, but for those five, six guys up front, it is who you are, right? And so that's that's the fine line you always teeter with because you can't, you know, if you're a jack of all, you're master of none, right? You don't get really good at anything, but you can't just pigeonhole yourself as well and be this all the time when you need a little variation. So that's that's as you go through spring, as we go through our cut-ups, we'll find out really where we need to head and what we're gonna be. What did four years under Chip sort of teach you about designing a running game? 
the word no doesn't exist. You can say, whoa, let's look at it. Uh, but kind of going back to the question you just had, like, well, that's not who we are. That's not what we do. So we're not going to do that. Well, then, you know, you can maybe get caught a little short that way. So the best thing about working with him was just, was that in the run game and the throw game and protections of, let's take a look at it. Can we make it efficient enough for us? Or can we make it who we are? Now, it wasn't always a finalized, like, yeah, we're going to do that. But there was never an ironclad of like, no, we don't do that. Let's, you know, let's see. Let's look at it. Let's talk through it. Let's twist it a little more so it becomes more like what we do, but there's still a wrinkle here. What do you think it would be like going from working with Chip to another guy who was sort of there at the beginning of the spread offense of Kevin Wilson? Uh, awesome. You know, I mean, I don't think Kevin's ever been around been around the bad offense, you know, in his tenure. So uh, that's the beautiful part about this game is you start getting coaches and those guys all working together. And, you know, it's a good little recipe. And then obviously through the vision of what Ryan wants to do of, you know, cooking it up and, and putting it out that way. So I, just in a short time being around Kev and all these guys, you know, we're in there with Kev and Tony and even Brian and, and Corey and those guys diving in and everybody's talking their area of expertise within that play you know it's exciting because you know you know be able to come in and supplement that. Yes, we talk about a 